We're here with former Senator Dan Webster, now a contestant in the GOP primary for the congressional district here that Alan Grayson now holds. Why, why now? It took you a while to get in this race. How come? Well, originally, uh, my family wasn't unified behind doing it. Uh, we have a small business here, um, and we're not you know, wealthy by any means. And a lot of our children uh, depend on the, the income we get here, and we want to make sure we could do it. And so at the time when people were asking me to see, I said, I can't because I just don't think that uh, I've got the unity of my family. Uh, you know, I don't have everybody saying it's the right direction. And then that changed. How, how so? How, what was the deciding factor? Uh, well, uh, several things, but I, uh, uh, I think uh, Congressman Posey had been talking to my wife, and so it, it, his wife, and she basically said, you know, look, um, the business can go, the kids can do it, um, get in. And I think that convinced her. Do you think you can raise the money that it will take to become a serious challenge in this race? Yes, I do, for sure. And have you started work on that already? I have. And how, how's that going? That's going great. Yeah. I think we should do fine with money. Because you will, you, you, you do, there is a large GOP field, and so that's going to siphon off some money. How do, you, how do you overcome that? Well, I have a lot of friends, uh, and I did run statewide one other time, or at least attempted to, and I, I raised uh, about $800,000 there. A lot of those people are still friends. And, you know, and then we have locally, we've got a lot of contacts from just over the years have been legislature 28 years and hopefully made a, a good enough name that people would would want to move me uh, on to Congress and for that I think people would be willing to give. How does a, how does a, a straight-laced sober guy go up against a, a very flamboyant media savvy uh, you know media hungry guy like Alan Grayson? I can't be anybody else than who I am that's mm -hmm. it so I'm not going to change anything I'm going to offer myself as a candidate I'm sure he will the same way and so will these other people in the primary, and uh, I'm going to be who I am. And what is the biggest issue? What is your biggest concern, or, or what has Alan Grayson done specifically to think that you can uh, turn voters uh, to your side on this? I think that Congress is broken. He's just a part of it. And the, uh, I believe that the process is broken. It's not open. It's, it's highly partisan. It's too petty. Uh, it's just a lot of people running in, in, in different directions. The meetings are closed, and you cannot make good legislation. I don't care whether it's Congress or the legislature in Wyoming. You can't make good legislation that, uh, without having a lot of unintended consequences when you close the doors. Is there a particular vote that he's taken? No, it's not the vote. It's the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some votes that I would disagree with and probably be on the other side, but it's more than that. It's the fact that we, as a, uh, as a, as a people, have allowed uh, the Congress to go unbridled in the way they operate their, their, um, their process and their, and their Congress. When, when, you, when you basically say, okay, we don't like the way the rules are, we don't like the way it turned out, so maybe we'll change the rule just to do that. The rules are there to protect the, uh, the minority, not the majority. And they should be used in a, in a way that allows the minority to be heard, and they're not being heard. You've seen this district evolve over the years, and now it kind of trends more Democratic. Um, I want to get your thoughts on that and what kind of a challenge that presents to you in that, in that circumstance. Well, I think it's a third, a third, a third. There's, there's about a third independence there, and I believe that independence, uh, I could appeal to them uh, on the basis of the fact that, uh, that Congress is broken, it's too partisan, and it's going the wrong direction. It needs to turn around, and we need people who have shown themselves to be able to work with uh, both sides and have friends on both sides. And, and to me, that's going to be hopefully a message that will be accepted in this district. I ran into Todd Long yesterday, and and he, you know, had some nice things to say about you. But he also he described you as part of the establishment, part of the Republican establishment, and that's how he he was basically suggesting that voters don't want that. The establishment is not the thing that people are looking for? Well, I, I served 28 years in the legislature. I think I proved myself to be someone who could rise above uh, whatever someone would call the establishment. I, I wasn't a person that sat on the back row and just watched. I led, 
and I believe the way we led and the, and the process we developed in the House of Representatives when I was Speaker and later on carrying that to the Senate, uh, an open process that allows everyone to participate, has kept us from having the, 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 uh, the, uh, the wrath of the voters come against us. I mean, you take a look at uh, any legislative body. Uh, the last legislative body I was in lasted until 2008. And if you look at any Republican legislative body across the, uh, the country, I would suspect that most of them lost members. We didn't. And it's because we governed well. Do you have any thoughts on that Arizona uh, immigration law, which would, is an issue that's going to play out in, in Washington at some point? I, I have not read that law, and I'm not familiar enough with it to, to make a comment on it. I do believe that uh, this, this country is a country of immigrants. However, they got in the door the front way. And, and whatever there is, and however it is that we could devise a system to, uh, to keep people who want to become citizens of this country uh, doing that, then great. But if somebody's trying to get in some other way, it's illegal. And I believe uh, there ought to be uh, tough laws that prohibit that. Last question, what should Charlie Chris do? <laughs> I don't know. That, that's going to be a decision he's going to have, have to make himself. Uh, to me, uh, he's a Republican. He said he's a Republican. I think he should stay one. But if, if he does decide to go independent, do you think he has any shot at all at, at, at winning? Well, that uh, remains to be seen. I mean, you can poll and poll and poll, but uh, I think in the end, uh, you're going to have to withstand some pretty heavy pressure uh, from both sides. Uh, there, there's a possibility that he doesn't do any better uh, that way. I think he could go out. If he were to lose as a Republican, I think he would be in much better stead than if he were to lose as an independent.